Yo, we have another tutorial and today we're going to be doing velocity and flow. This is one of the key things you need for any edit. So first of all, what is velocity and what is flow? It is essentially the flow of speed in your edits. Now the first step for any velocity is to find a good song because we're going to be syncing the speed to the song and essentially the flow of your entire edit is going to be based on the song. This is probably the most important part. You need to find something that has a lot of beats and has a nice flow in general. So I found this song right here. You can double press L to open up the waveform. So I've got my song to just this short part for the tutorial. So the first step is to create points where the beats are. So just you zoom in. Now you can manually do this. You can see the high peaks is where the beats are. Or you can check your shortcuts in edit keyboard shortcuts and the default button is asterisk. Now when you press this, it creates a little point like this. And essentially what you want to do is you want to go through and put points on every single beat where you're going to be adding flow to. So something like this, one at the start and then press play. Now you really want to listen to the song. You can do it manually by looking at the waveform, but it's not going to tell you all the information because you can sync to anything. It doesn't have to be the beat, it can just be the flow of the song, it can be words, it can be anything. You're going to have to use your ears and a little bit of creativity. Uh, try not to spam these points too much, just put them in key moments in the song where you're going to be adding flow in the edit to. Now this takes a little bit of practice, but you'll get it with time. So these are mine. Now these are purely to help us later on. So once you've got your song and once you've marked the key points where you want the flow to be now, flow can mean it speeds up slows down and that's essentially velocity or in after effects it's called time remapping so once you've got your song and your keyframes you want to get your clips so i've got three clips right here I'm going to start with this one now once you've got your clip you want to cut it so i'm going to cut right before i start shooting right here and then finish right here now obviously this clip is way too long right now that's why we're going to be adding flow as well it can speed some of this up so the first step is you press Control, alt and t this opens something called time remap um in sony vegas it used to be called velocity it should add two keyframes one at the start and one at the end now we can't see it because we cut the clip as you can see they're right here now a mistake that a lot of first people do is they just move these keyframes here and they think there we go but no these keyframes resemble the time so this is where the clip starts and this is the starting time as you can see it's zero seconds once we've cut it here is now three seconds 51 okay if we move this here, it brings a zero here. If we do this, it will be really, really fast. That's not what we want. So we're going to undo that. And if you call it, you clip like this, you just want to add another keyframe at the start and another one at the beginning at these times that you cut it. Now, these keyframes, um, you can do what you want with them. I usually delete them, just to not in my way. However, if you're going to be expanding into the clip later on, you might want to keep this. It's up to you. I'm just going to delete it for the case of simplicity right now. Now we have this clip. And the correct keyframes start and finish you can see let's put this here so this clip is too long now i'm going to teach you the basics of keyframes so as you can see these are two keyframes if we go into the curve editor which is right here essentially how the graph works is left to right is time as you can see when you move the timeline it goes forward and up and down is speed so as the time goes past, it also goes up. Now, this is a linear graph. This is how a normal video plays. It's just straight line. So the first thing we want to do is go back, highlight these keyframes and press F9. You can also just right click them, keyframe assistant and easy ease right here. Now, what this does is it smooths them out, it gives it an S shape. So it goes slow at the start, normal speed in the middle, and then slow at the end. Now, this isn't what we want usually. This is a good start. But usually you want it to go fast on the beat, not slow. So we need to change this. All you have to do is simply move this yellow line down like this, and move this one up like this. So now what we've done is we've essentially reversed it. It goes fast and then slow and then fast again. Now be careful. If your clip is low FPS, this part right here, which goes slow, it could get really laggy. If you don't have enough frames in your footage, it could get stuttery. One way to fix this is this button right here. You could just press it twice 
However, it will create some artifacts, so be careful. This is why a lot of editors prefer 60 or even 120 FPS clips, it's so that you can slow it down more. As you can see here, a lot of artifacts. If your clip is low FPS, you can just reduce these slightly. Essentially make this middle part go more up rather than flat. Essentially the middle part will be less slow, giving it more frames. And the start and the end are still fast. So now if we play this, as you can see, fast slow and fast now once you get a little bit more advanced with this you can customize this now this is the most basic graph this is what i recommend you start with once you're starting to learn however once you get a bit more advanced you can mess around with something like this now this is fast and then it gradually slows down now again i told you if this line is too straight there's not enough frames for it to be that slow it will start getting really choppy if we turn this on click this twice you're able to see a lot of artifacts so make sure if you're doing something like this, that the line is always going up to some extent, so it's not too slow. I would do something like this, that way it's fast and then gradually goes up in speed. Just to demonstrate this, if I make this too flat at the end, look how choppy it gets. I'm going to be talking about advanced keyframes a little bit later on. So now you understand how to enable timing wrapping and create basic keyframes, we're going to just revert these for now to revert them you can press Control left click and now we're going to be using the song so we need to turn this back on and essentially we want to create keyframes on the beat so create these keyframes now only the ones you're going to use you don't have to use every single one in the song you can do other effects but i'm going to do every single one actually before we do that so as you can see the end of the clip we need to move this to the closest keyframe on the song we can it doesn't matter if it speeds it up or slows it down a little bit so like this we can cut it with alt brackets. So once we've added all the keyframes on all the beats of the song or whatever flow you decided to keyframe to, we're gonna do the same thing again. We're gonna highlight these and press F9. So as you can see, now we have a slightly bigger curve made up of smaller curves. Now these are all the individual points that we made on the song markers that we made. And essentially, a very, very, very basic velocity setup would be to just do what we did again, where it goes fast and then slow and then fast on every single one. So you need to be careful when you do this. You need to adjust the size depending on how big this line is. As you can see, if you do it too much, this is going down, which means it's going to go backwards in time. If you do it too straight like this, too slow, it'll be like 2 FPS. There's not enough frames to be that slow. So you always want to make sure when you do this that the size is good enough where the line is always going up to some extent. You have a little bit more leniency if your clips have a lot of FPS. So this is what you want it to look like. Now, if we play this... You can see on the beats or on the markers that we made, we speed up essentially. So these are the markers we made and the time speeds up where we put these markers. Now this is a very, very basic setup. There's not a lot of creativity in this. Um, if you're starting out, I suggest you try and do this. This clip isn't the best, but the next step would be to move these keyframes to a section of the video that you want to show. Now, what I mean by that is, for example, on this marker and beat, that we created right here. I want him to get the first kill. Now, the best way to do this is just select this and then move it up and down in time like this. You can hold shift and it goes left and right or up and down. And I'm just gonna go right before the first kill. So right here. And then on this marker, I'm gonna do the second kill, right? So I usually put it in the same place as the last one. And I move forward in time. There we go, that's the second one, same thing. Third one right there and last one. Now, once you've done this, as you can see, some of the lines look a little bit wonky. This one's too straight. We just want to reduce this a little bit, keep that flow. This one is too high. This is going to be really fast. So you can actually speed this one up a little bit like this. You want to try and keep these vertical lines somewhat similar throughout going up at the same pace as the linear line that we saw before, but it doesn't have to be perfect. Don't worry. So now let me just adjust these slightly. Now let's test this out. Now, either way, I'd recommend turning on frame blending just because it helps smooth out those extra frames. And when you're doing velocity, the sound is going to also speed up and down. So I recommend just muting it. When you're doing velocity, you're going to have to add key sound effects in manually yourself. In this case, I would get a Valorant sound pack. Now, again, this clip isn't the best to showcase this. However, I hope you understand the key points. So on each mark that we create by listening to the song, which in my case mostly was beats, 
or had a voice, put the markers and then I sped up the clip and then I set it to right before the kill. Now, this is just one clip. How do you do multiple? I'm just going to add another clip right here. And essentially, it's just the same thing. Now here in the song, when she says set C, I want it to go forwards and then backwards in time. So I'm going to teach you how to do that. So probably right here. So again, you want to cut the clip, control alt T. If that clip is already here, the end is here. Uh, I'm just going to keep it there just in case I want to expand this clip, but I will add a keyframe right here. And essentially I want this to be the last frame of his knife. I want it to go here and then reverse back to this one. So how do I do this? I create a keyframe in the middle right here. Once you've created it, you can move it along. And then on the end, you want to just copy the first marker. Now, what this does is it starts here and it ends here, which means it goes forward and then it goes backwards. Okay. Now, again, you want to move these keyframes to the markers that you made to match to the song. So we're going to move these slightly, just like this, and then cut. Now, again, the same thing, F9. Also, another thing I forgot to mention, if this graph pops up for you, this is the motion graph. Now, you want to right click and click edit value graph, not the speed graph, value graph. And you should get this one. Now, ignore this massive line. This is just the keyframe that we had at the end of the video, just in case we want to expand it. And all you want to do is the exact same thing. Now, as you can see, this looks a little bit different. It doesn't go up. That's because it reverses right here which means it goes up and then back down to the same point it started at. But the process is essentially the same. Make it go fast at the start and fast at the end. Now, in the middle, I would try and keep it smooth. This is where you do a little bit of advanced keyframes. Something like this. So it goes fast, slow, fast, okay? Now, if we watch this, okay? This is what we created now. Again, we want to turn on frame blending. This will make it look smoother. Now for this specific clip, I want it to be even faster at the start. I want it to be something like this, okay? Something like this. I know it looks wonky, but it's even faster at the start and then it goes slow. Now, if we combine this with this clip, let's just preview this little section right here. Now, this is very, very basic. Markers, keyframes, make it go fast on the beat, okay? Now, you're going to have to get really creative with both where you put your markers in the song and what type of curves you do. Obviously, this has really, really basic curves. This has slightly more advanced curves, but you can just mess with it. As long as you know how it works, which is the formula we did before, the taller it is, the faster it is, and we can just... We could just mess with these curves. Now, you don't have to do them straight up like I did. In fact, most of the time, I wouldn't recommend this. This is too sharp a curve. I recommend you do something like this, okay? Apart from the start. Now, I like to do sharp at the start at the end. But in between, I like to just do this. Make it slightly diagonal to smooth the points out a little bit. Now, if we watch everything, this is what we have so far. Now... This clip is a little bit too slow for me. Now, what you can do is if you highlight all the keyframes and then hold Alt and click, left click, drag, it shrinks them all down like this. Now, you could shrink it down, say like this. And then if you have slightly more points that you didn't use, you can just move them right to the markers and then you create something else. Now, be careful when you do this because you might have to do the curves again. As you can see, if we're going here, this one is completely messed up. So make sure you fix that. Also, another thing you should know, if we go back to this, if, for example, your next kill here is too far apart, let's say your next kill is this high. Let's just get rid of these for a second. This is going to be sped up way too much. No matter what you do, it's going to be sped up way too much. Imagine your next kill is like here too far apart the graph is going to be crazy it's not going to be not going to be able to do anything with it. it's way bigger than the other ones as you can see if a section of your clip is too fast all you want to do is cut it so on the beat here let's say i want the kill here okay you want to control shift d to cut control shift d to cut here delete this part and you would merge the kills like this if the kills are too far apart or whatever you're trying to edit, if it's too far apart, the speed will be too high when you try to keyframe it. And that's when you want to cut that empty space out and keep the velocity the same speed. So instead of speeding from one kill to the next one, just cut the space in between. So that's pretty much it for the tutorial. Here is, you know, I'd add a cinematic or something like that.
Yeah, I just found a random cinematic. Obviously, you usually want it related to your video. Cinematics are really simple to edit because you can just cut exactly where you need them like this. You can move the keyframes because cinematics, they can be, this one's pretty slow. And then you just F9, do a basic, basic curve like this. Same one we've been doing. Now, obviously, there's a beat here. You can add that as well if you like. And then just F9 that and do something like this. It's a little bit earlier than the marker I put down. So you have to listen out because obviously your markers could be delayed, they're not going to be perfect. But essentially you'll get something like this. So yeah, if you have any questions, just uh, let me know. That should be the basics for Velocity. It's a really, really creative process, you know, from the song to when you put the markers, when you think the flow is going to be there, to the cares themselves and the cuts you're going to do. It's really, really creative process, but essentially it's just manipulating the speed to match the song or whatever you're doing. There's a lot of cool advanced tricks you can do, but this is just the basics. So let me know what you guys want to see next. I'm going to be doing a tutorial every week now and yeah.